Okay, well, it is, uh, it is the top of the hour and folks are just now getting on the call. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and get started. And then uh, as folks uh, get on, we'll, uh, we'll make introductions and kick things off. Uh, but as we always do for, uh, for our Hyperledger Healthcare SIG meetings, uh, just a reminder that this, uh, record, this meeting is being recorded uh, and that uh, this is an open source, open community meeting. Uh, and so I also want to make sure that everyone knows about our antitrust. So for those of you that are uh, in front of a, a laptop or desktop, uh, I'm posting our antitrust policy notice, so please read through that. Uh, the upshot of that is be a good person. Uh, and if you want to read any more details, feel free to go to the URL that's listed there for details on our antitrust policy. Um, so, uh, oh, good morning to, to Wendy on the call. How are you? Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Happy Friday. <laughs> yes. Um, as always, we always like to have an opportunity for folks to uh, to introduce themselves and uh, and say hello. So uh, we'll hand it over to our our one of our newer uh, members that's joining us, uh, calling from I think it was San Francisco. Do, do you want to make introduction? Uh, yeah. Hey, everybody. My name is uh, Anthony Doe. I'm Calling from San Francisco. I do apologize for the road noise if there's any in the background. I just really want to make the meeting. Um, uh, I just want to say I'm excited to join uh, the meeting and just a little bit about me. Um, I'm a practicing uh, pharmacist for the last seven years for Kaiser Permanente, uh, which is, um, some of you may know, it's uh, one of the largest uh, healthcare provider in uh, the state. Uh, I've also been uh, always been building a web and mobile uh, technology, uh, engineering-wise, myself, and uh, I'm very curious and interested in solving problems using Hyperledger, and I'm working on a project to hopefully use the technology in the uh, electronic prescription space. Oh, very cool. Uh, and you said nice you're, you're uh, you said you're down in the Bay Area? Uh, yeah, that's correct. I'm down in the Bay Area. Excellent. And uh, yeah, I think most of us probably are familiar with Kaiser Permanente. Um, and in fact, uh, we have, uh, I know we have at least, uh, Wendy, are you a PharmD? Sorry, I was muted. No, I'm not a PharmD. I'm a PhD. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to think. Well, I, I think your colleague is a PharmD. Is that correct? Yes. Erica Bierbauer is a PharmD. She's not on the call right now, though. Okay. Yeah. 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 For, for some reason, I was thinking of, of, of you, Wendy, and I was thinking it was either you or, or Erica. So, uh, and I believe on the last call, uh, we had uh, Kent Lau from Hong Kong, who also is a PharmD, if, I, am I, if I'm remembering correctly. So we do have a pretty good represent, uh, representation of, uh, of uh, PharmD folks. Uh, and, uh, and Anthony, to your point uh, regarding self-sovereign identity, uh, great to have you uh, thinking about that. Uh, most folks, uh, as they get involved in, uh, in uh, blockchain technologies, tend to go the route of uh, the distributed ledger or DLT technology. Uh, and uh, this is, it's really great to see that folks are starting to pay a little bit more attention, uh, perhaps, to SSI or self sovereign identity or identity management or distributed identity. Um, and, uh, and if you're looking at the Hyperledger framework, that would include uh, Hyperledger Indy, which is a contribution by the Sovereign Foundation and Evernim. So uh, yeah, so great to have you on the call, Anthony. Uh, feel free to, to sort of head over to the Rocket Chat channel uh, for our healthcare SIG. Uh, introduce yourself there as well, and then that way it'd be, uh, it'll be easier for folks that want to get to know you better uh, to connect with you uh, more directly, rather than um, obviously through, through, through a phone call, uh, because that's all we see about you right now. But great to have you on the call, Anthony. Sure, thank you. Okay, uh, it, it seems like we have an awful light crew uh, this morning. Uh, it could be the nice weather. It could just be Friday. Uh, but uh, I do see some some fam familiar folks on the call. So great. Uh, good to, good morning to you, Alex, uh, from the Ukraine, if I recall. Yes, uh, morning, Richard. How are you doing? Fine, thanks. Uh, great to have you on the call. And then for folks that uh, may see Alex's name is familiar, uh, Alex is uh, up on the GitHub, uh, I'm sorry, on the Hyperledger Labs project on GitHub, 
Uh, Alex runs the uh, the health healthcare sawtooth project, uh, and uh, and is is developing that out. Uh, and Alex, did, did you say you're also working with Kent Lau? Uh, can you please repeat, Richard? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, when when last time you presented uh, where you are with your project, I seem to recall that you had someone that was interested in maybe following up with you. And I thought it was a... a uh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. Yes, uh, we uh, work uh, uh, work together, Kent uh, and I work uh, together on this project. So uh, he uh, like uh, provides some suggestions and hypotheses and I'm uh, uh, make uh, updates uh, to the project and uh, uh, we are working on it. Okay, well good to hear, excellent, good, good, good. Yeah, so, yeah, so uh, but basically we have uh, quite a good uh, progress <laughs> and I think uh, uh, in a few weeks uh, maybe I will be ready to provide you some uh, update on this project. Oh good, all right, well sounds great. Thank you for that. Um, okay, is, is there anyone else uh, on the call that would like, uh, that's, that's new on the call, would like to introdu introduce yourself? Um, hey, it's uh, Raj Revuru. I'm just new to this call. Um, oh, good morning, Raj. Great to have you. Uh, hey, uh, good morning. I'm based out of uh, New York uh, Tri-State region. Um, this is my first time joining this call. Uh, Excellent. Uh, great to have you. Uh, so you're out on the East Coast, and uh, tell us a little bit about your interests uh, about with blockchain technologies and specifically in the healthcare space. Um, so it's just a personal interest. I work for a, a, a company called Presidio. Uh, they're in a different space. Uh, we're looking into emerging technologies, and uh, one of the technology which is on our uh, key focus is the blockchain. Um, and uh, we do work with the healthcare providers in the New York, New York, New York, New Jersey region on a different capacity with the different service solutions. So we just wanted to know what's, uh, what's going on in the healthcare and the blockchain to see if we can help the customers and that kind of stuff. Excellent. Very good. Uh, and uh, what's the name of the company again? Uh, Presidio. Uh, okay. We are, a, we are a, a network and IT uh, hardware, like in you know, a VMware Cisco partner. Oh, very cool. Right, so are you a consulting group then? Is that the idea? Yeah, so yeah, we, we are a consulting group for our healthcare customers, correct? Ah, excellent, excellent. And, and what about your, your personal uh, interest or, or background? Are you an engineer or marketing? Yeah, or? no, no, I'm, I'm an engineer. So uh, what we've been doing with, for healthcare was uh, we do uh, unified communications, um, just like uh, you know, the integration of the phone system with their uh, ERP, uh, you know, uh, you know, pager systems, so overhead paging, and then we do a lot of uh, video conferencing, um, especially on the healthcare vertical, um, so on and so forth. Excellent. Well, great to have you on the call. Uh, welcome, as always. Uh, if if you're uh, interested uh, in, in sort of talking a little bit more or uh, getting uh, you, you or your company's name out uh, to membership here, we, we keep a membership directory and I'll click over to it just now. Uh, and feel free to, to jump on and add your name to this. Uh, this is a great opportunity okay. to just sort of uh, network uh, with others uh, that have the similar interests uh, within the organization here. Uh, and yeah, great to have you on the call and as always, welcome. Thank you. Alrighty, uh, is there anyone else? Uh, I think everybody else we know. Oh, and I just saw Dennis get on the call. So uh, good morning to Dennis, uh, calling from Switzerland. How are you, Dennis? Hey, how are you doing? Hi, guys. I just managed to connect. So for being late. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's okay. It's technology, you know. It's the hard yeah. stuff. <laughs> All right. Hi, Dennis. Well, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Good. Good to see you on the call. Yeah, great. Great meeting you guys again. And oh. I am, I'm not in Switzerland. I'm just on the shore in Turkey from sailing. Just get, came from sailing. 
Oh, ain't, ain't life <laughs> that tough? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> sorry to make make yeah. Sorry to 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 make the the wrong assumption that you're in Switzerland, but instead you're in Turkey. So <laughs> exactly coming coming off a sailboat, life is rough. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay, well, uh, great to have you on the call, Dennis. Uh, and in fact, uh, I'll be I'll be coming back around to you just shortly uh, to to have you give us our, your update on on the patient subgroup. Um, so let's see. Uh, so let's walk through community announcements. Uh, is anyone on the call interested in, in making a community announcement? Uh, anything that's related to blockchain technologies in the healthcare space, or just uh, general healthcare announcements that may have some impact on blockchain? Hello, this is this is Wendy, and I just wanted to remind everyone about some fantastic upcoming conferences that they might be interested in. So on October 3rd and 4th, um, there is the Global Blockchain Summit in uh, Denver, Colorado, and I will be speaking with an attorney, Mike Henson, about um, regulatory considerations in blockchain, so we certainly welcome everyone to come. And also on October 15 is Converge to Accelerate. And I will be speaking on a panel um, for that conference. And I just, it will be a different focus, mostly healthcare focus, and just really encourage everyone to come. Excellent. Uh, thanks for that, Wendy. And uh, yeah, and actually, we're hoping to have Tori come and speak here uh, to membership uh, in the next uh, few weeks or so. So that'll be great to have her oh, talk a little yes. bit about it. Oh, yes. Yeah. Fantastic. I spoke with her on the phone two days ago, and she is just a wealth of knowledge and enthusiasm for helping advance the blockchain community. So and really... Yeah. And, and as well, Tori is the, uh, the publisher founder for uh, Blockchain in Healthcare Today which is a great resource. And so hopefully what we'll be doing, uh, what she and I talked about, uh, actually it was earlier this week, I think on Monday, uh, what we talked about is finding a way for uh, this organization, Hyperledger, to work closer uh, with Tori and her, uh, her publication uh, so that we can sort of really really find ways to merge uh, our sort of resources in, into a, sort of a, a greater, more comprehensive resource. Because uh, a lot of what we do is complementary to, to what she offers and, and vice versa. So, and she's a great person. So happy to, happy to find that uh, fit going forward. So, uh, so thank you for that, Wendy. Um, all righty, any, anyone else uh, community announcements? All righty. Uh, let's head over to uh, a subgroup update. And for those of you that are newer on the call, uh, the way this uh, special interest group is, is organized is we have uh, our general meetings here, which is really kind of a clearinghouse and sort of an update, uh, sort of a broad understanding of what's going on in the special interest group. Uh, as well, for, for, uh, for specific sort of uh, where, kind of where boots on the ground or where the rubber meets the road. This is where the actual work gets done through our specific subgroups and ad hoc teams. Uh, we currently have three subgroups uh, that focus uh, around very specific areas in the healthcare space. Uh, and then we have some ad hoc teams that, that generally will spin up and focus around a topic. Uh, sometimes those uh, grow into subgroups and, uh, and sometimes they're very specific and we spin them up and then spin, spin back down again. So we'll take a look at subgroups. Uh, we have th three subgroups, patient member subgroup, uh, payer subgroup, and the healthcare interoperability subgroup. Uh, Dennis is on the call this morning. So Dennis, you wanna tell us a little bit about, about what's been going on in the, in the patient member subgroup? Yes, I, I just tried to um, unmute. Um, we had last week a, a great meeting together. After we finished uh, the uh, clinical trial process definition together with Patty. Thanks again uh, very much, Patty. It was uh, great work together with you. And we discussed about uh, existing uh, process definition and the possible implement implementation uh, with hyperledger tools in blockchain. And we found out the patient consent, reconsent is one of the most uh, repeating uh, process and we decided to focus on that and we decided also uh, work together uh, outside of the uh, meetings 
patient subgroup meetings, patient uh, data subgroup meetings. And today, tonight, we start with the first one. So uh, I'm very happy to be involved in that, uh, in that, uh, in that uh, work together because we have been already discussing about different architectures and it looks very promising for all of us to, to go ahead. Uh, I see that Patty is also on the call. Patty, would you also like to add uh, from your side? Hi, Dennis. Um, yeah, I joined a little bit late. Hello, everybody. Um, I, I, all I can say is that I'm really enjoying um, this new project that we're working together. Um, I think it's, um, we all found in the last meeting, we had even some new people joining. We even had someone in an airplane that was taking off and speaking to us <laughs> um, and telling us that he was very interested in um, what we're working on, basically a uh, focus on, on clinical trials and uh, uh, specifically patient recruitment. Um, he was Michael Dillon. Uh, he is uh, from Switzerland, from a very special uh, organization, from a uh, health bank. Uh, patient data is collected by a cooperative. P patients are coming to that uh, organization and they have different benefits. And the whole project is running on, the, uh, on a blockchain. So it's also another uh, perspective uh, to, instead of having the consent from the patient, they collect uh, from the patient their participation on their uh, system. So, uh, and I suppose he's going to also uh, support us uh, and uh, work together in the next meetings. Oh, that sounds interesting. I didn't. I didn't know that about. Um, so we also have uh, someone from the health bank, and you mean um, the health bank is that um, uh, a for-profit or, or or non-profit organization? And you say they're using the blockchain. Do you have more information with that, Dennis? Uh, uh, since this is the healthcare group, I'm just curious. Yeah, sure. Uh, it's basically tokenization, and that's why they use Ethereum but I don't have more detailed information about their uh, precise architecture. Uh, the thing is, uh, they have uh, roughly 250,000 patients involving in the project. And the, the idea is instead of collecting the consent and the data from the patient, they invite and uh, offer different benefits uh, to the patient uh, in order to uh, have their total consent from the start. And this is, the, this is kind of a bypass, what we are trying to do. On the other side, uh, it's also an interesting idea. I found it from the start uh, very uh, exciting, what they are doing. And I invited him to join our group. And uh, I actually invited him to present about the health bank and he didn't have time uh, last time and i hope uh, next time he can also uh, able to present more about his project and about the organization so this this is very interesting dennis uh, I, we're, i'm just uh, up on the screen i have uh, the health bank website up and i'm just looking at the faq and uh, it's interesting I, it looks like they're they're looking for patients to aggregate their data share basically share their data and aggregate their data through exactly. through health bank um, can, can you tell I, I don't know if you know the answer to this can you tell us a little bit about how this mechanism works in switzerland or is this a, a european approach uh, it almost looks like it may be uh, has influence with Germany as well, and so how how does this work in in Europe? Um, in Europe, as you know, the basic motivation is the GDPR, and based on that, the patient uh, data regulations in different countries. Switzerland is not the best example for the integration. So collecting the data uh, individually and from different providers, it's a tough matter. That's why Health Bank is, is a possible solution to bypass it and invite the patients instead of collecting their data from different providers. And uh, that's, that's the basic idea. 
And if you come and join to Health Bank, you give your consent uh, for your data. And they anonymize your data, and uh, they can also uh, offer that for different uh, projects outside, outside, outside of the company, outside, outside of the organization. And this is they, what they're all uh, offering. The, 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 uh, the trade off is they also offer different benefits to the patients. But I don't know exactly for which kind of patient, which benefits. That's why I want to have him uh, in our group to present it. And I hope in the next days uh, we can manage it to, to, to have him uh, to, to, to know more about it. Very interesting. Okay, well, well thank you for that, uh, Dennis. Uh, yeah, it's, it'll be interesting to see uh, how, uh, how the work that you guys are doing with Health Bank sort of rolls into the work uh, through the subgroup. Uh, and I think you had mentioned that Health Bank is currently using Ethereum, is that correct? Yeah, as far as I know, yes. Yeah, okay, oh great, excellent. Well, uh, thanks so much for the update, Dennis. Uh, it sounds like uh, the subgroup is moving along and I'm happy to hear about that. Uh, and then for anyone that's new on the call, uh, feel free to contact Dennis directly. Uh, and again, uh, you could use uh, Rocket Chat, uh, our, our healthcare channel uh, over there, and uh, and of course use our listserv. And so you know you can send out an email directly to membership that way as well. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you, Dennis. Thank you. Uh, all right. So for our next two, and I'm looking at a, on our list of participants for the morning. Uh, for the next two, uh, it does not look like Ravish is uh, on the call for their payer subgroup. Uh, for people that are, are new on the call, uh, the payer subgroup is uh, its probably one of our longer uh, running uh, subgroups, uh, probably in line with payer, uh, with patient as well. Um, uh, so, so the payer subgroup focuses on, of course, the payer side of the equation. Uh, when we think about uh, healthcare space, we think about three, three components, uh, patient, payer, and provider. So Ravish has been working with the payer side of the equation. Um, and so, uh, I, honestly, uh, I, since uh, I, did, I haven't gotten an update from Ravish, uh, they meet every two weeks, and I just don't know what they've been up to over the past, uh, past couple of weeks. So I'll have to follow up with him and, and update. I'll update the wiki here with update from him on that. Uh, as well for the healthcare and operability subgroup, uh, Stephen Elliott has been working to, this is our newest subgroup, uh, the purpose of this subgroup is to develop uh, a really sort of a bottom-up approach, uh, develop some services on top of Hyperledger Fabric so that uh, it'll make uh, interoperability uh, between uh, healthcare systems easier to use. Uh, Stephen uh, has been working uh, on a uh, federal grant proposal for the past month or so, and I know he's been heads down on that. Um, uh, but we're excited that that subgroup, uh, the healthcare interoperability subgroup, uh, continues to move forward, and uh, I suspect uh, Stephen White will be on a call next uh, next next meeting to give us an update on what's going on there. Um, let's see for our ad hoc teams update. Uh, as always, um, we have a wiki redesign team, uh, and uh, and that is something that we are always sort of really mindful of, and and, uh, and really. The wiki for a lot of folks, uh, particularly newer folks uh, that come to this organization, uh, this is sort of your firsthand uh, look at things. Uh, if anyone on the call happens to be an expert with, uh, with Confluence, uh, that's the tool that we use here. Uh, it'd be great to, to have you uh, help us out in uh, redesigning uh, or updating uh, this, uh, the wiki. Uh, my personal interest uh, is that uh, beyond just the healthcare special interest group, uh, I'm really sensitive to any new member coming through the sort of the front door of Hyperledger.org. Uh, Hyperledger, of course, is part of the Linux Foundation. Uh, it's open source, open community, uh, which really means that anyone can, can get involved in the organization uh, at any level. Um, so my, my personal interest is finding uh, a great design uh, for our uh, wikis that really uh, uh, works across multiple special interest groups. So clearly the healthcare SIG is my number one interest, but I really am looking for a solution that works across multiple SIGs so that members can move back and forth between the special interest group as they see fit. Uh, 
so that's sort of our work effort there and I and this is sort of an ongoing thing and we're always looking for folks that are interested in, in do donating their time uh, and helping to, to develop through uh, through the use of Confluence. So if you have an interest in that uh, and you just have an expertise in, in design, uh, feel free to contact me uh, and I'll, I'll find a way to, to, to make, make, your, uh, make your work valuable. Okay, uh, we also have an academic research team that's headed up by Adrian Berg. Uh, that's sort of gone sideways. Uh, I know Adrian has been out on, uh, on a, I think it was leave of absence or academic leave. So uh, the, the gist of the academic research team has been uh, to really drive uh, academic interests in the blockchain uh, and healthcare space. Uh, as most of us know, healthcare is driven uh, pretty significantly by academic process and that really uh, is peer reviewed uh, white papers and a very objective understanding of uh, making use of, of newer technologies. Uh, so this research team is really invested in looking into ways to make that uh, uh, sort of validate that process. Um, interestingly, this research team will probably be greatly influenced by um, the work that's happening over on the blockchain uh, in, in healthcare today group, and that's Tori's group that uh, Wendy and I were talking about earlier. So it may be that this is the interface that we make use of going forward for that. Uh, and uh, as I said, we'll have uh, Tori joining us sometime in the very near future uh, to talk a little bit more about uh, her experiences in the academic space. And so um, there's, there's real potential for, for growing this, uh, this research team out. And then uh, we uh, sort of related to that because there's a lot of academia sort of rolled in this as well as uh, and uh, and Wendy Charles our lead uh, is is outstanding in this space. Uh, we have our use case development team that Wendy's leading and uh, Wendy do you want to give us an update on that? Uh -huh. Yeah well um, yesterday I was supposed to be having a teleconference with two members of the Linux Foundation about how to create the use cases that would meet their um, requirements uh, for how to best fit into the structure that they require and anything that involves Hyperledger has to also comply with the brand and then they canceled the call so they did provide a little bit wording structure and um, they did uh, they're going to provide some templates hopefully in the next couple days so for those of you who are on the use case um, working group, I am really hoping to get templates to you so that we can start filling them in, but at least we'll be confident that if we use, if we work with the Linux Foundation, that they will really help us to promote these and to support them um, in any Hyperledger Linux Foundation space. Yeah, and uh, and I, I've been sort of following that thread, Wendy. Uh, yeah, it is a little disheartening to know that uh, the call kind of got canceled last minute, which is unfortunate. Uh, but I think the approach that, that you're taking with this team is is spot on. Uh, the the idea being, uh, for those of you that are sort of new to the to the the, the SIG here, uh, really one of the there were two big things that sort of came out of those this uh, last year's Hims conference. Uh, one was that the the the, the real real serious desire for uh, us publishing use cases uh, and the other really is understanding sort of the governance model surrounding blockchain implementation in existing uh, architecture uh, and so with with use cases you know the approach uh, that Wendy's taking is to, to really look at a process here so that we can uh, be very consistent in developing the use cases and be uh, very sort of clean in those designs so they'll be very easy to be uh, sort of understood and picked up by, uh, by members that are uh, outside maybe uh, the community. They're just getting started with understanding blockchain technologies. Uh, and, uh, and this is really an aid in learning and sort of understanding in context how to make use of blockchain technologies within the healthcare space. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so anyone who's on the call that's interested, uh, you know, feel free to contact Wendy regarding this. Uh, I think this is going to be a pretty significant uh, uh, team moving forward, uh, uh, just because there's there's so, so much ongoing demand um, uh, for this kind of information. And 
I had mentioned earlier that this is sort of a, a very closely sort of tied in or buttressed with a lot of the academic research that's going on in this space. This is in a way uh, to sort of formalize that process to, to really uh, drive an understanding of, of how we use blockchain technologies effectively uh, and, and maybe even objectively uh, in the healthcare space. So thanks yeah, for that. Yeah, thank you. And I just wanted to emphasize that if we design these right from the beginning, that the Linux Foundation will, will be a huge partner and advocate in getting the word out and helping us promote these as a way to better use blockchain in healthcare. Yeah, I, I agree. And one of the problems that we've had in the past, uh, we've, we've, you know, we've attempted to do this and it was sort of just, uh, I mean, it was well intentioned, but it was just uh, very piecemeal. And what happens is, uh, you know, some someone will will define a use case, uh, but the context of that is is slightly different than someone else, and the format may be different than someone else, and so you end up with a really difficult sort of experience experience in walking these use cases. So formalizing the process, I think, is the, is absolutely the right way to go. Uh, and if, as you point out, if done right, this is going to be a great uh, sort of a jewel in the, in the crown for, for the work that we do here, because so much of this is going to be exposed to new people in the community, uh, particularly in the healthcare community, that are just trying to understand how to make, use of, make the best use of blockchain technology, sort of a best pra practices approach. Well, thank you for that, Wendy. Um, all righty. Uh, any other comments or thoughts uh, on that? on that point or regarding our ad hoc teams? Hey, All righty. Uh, yep. um, so this use cases, uh, how do they map out with the uh, subgroups? Uh, do they, do they uh, like say, if you take a payer subgroup, right? Uh, would you have our use cases in that subgroup or how does, is there any correlation between them or is it entirely de inter inter independent? Yeah, so that's a great that's a great question, Raj. So so right now we're not really focusing on uh, uh, sort of tying these to to the individual subgroups. Uh, however, that that may be an, uh, an opportunity uh, for us to sort of pursue that going forward. Uh, but I, you know, I'll, I'll let Wendy talk uh, more on this topic. But at at sure. the moment, we're really looking at some some just fundamental uh, use cases, uh, and then we're going to develop the process behind that, and then sort of Broaden, broaden, the, broaden the activity out from there. But Wendy, go ahead. Yeah, that's spot on, Rich. So um, I am grateful to the, the working group members who have uh, committed some time. Um, of course, Patty, um, thank you for your participation. Ray Chan, um, Erica Bierbrauer, and Rich. Uh, we determined that some of the use cases that are gaining the most traction in the community and are most ready to be, um, what's the right word, implemented uh, would be uh, dr drug supply chain processing, medical records with the consent access process, and thank you, Patty, for um, your interest in that for demonstrating credentialing and also insurance pairs. So if they overlap with a, with a current working group, that's awesome because we would want to involve those members with their expertise in helping inform the community about how these can be best implemented. Otherwise, we'll just extend to the larger community, the Hyperledger Healthcare Special Interest Group community to see um, which members could share, share some of their expertise. Wendy, um, um, I, I actually just remember that I had a question for you. Yeah. And, um, so since you mentioned my name, and that's when I pay attention because I was actually reading here. I'm still reading about <laughs> health. And sorry for that. Multitasking. Um, you, when we met, um, I after that, I, I, I think I didn't make notes, and I, I was looking through my emails, and I'm not sure if we agreed. Um, that each was going to work on something or look at some kind of like action items. Uh, I don't know if you have that anywhere and because your project is, uh, is it, uh, I don't know if it has its own wiki page maybe. So I also look for that. Uh, um, no, I yeah. To tell us if there's like anything that we need to do. I, I saw your email and I think you will, you're, you're talking with the Hyperledger community to get help with them. So I saw that email, but um, as far as uh, how we're going to work on this or if anything, anybody has to do anything, by the way, I was very happy that I didn't find any action items. I'm very busy. 
<laughs> but, yes. is, but now I have to be honest. And, and now that you're here, I ask you if there, if you, there was anything. <laughs> you did not miss out on anything. I good. asked you to hold off. So okay, good, good. <laughs> good. good. So I had created a Google space and um, where I had put the minutes of our meeting. And that's where we're going to collect some uh, academic literature, too, that can help inform some of these use cases. We had agreed on about five pages. So it's not a lot of writing. And uh, the, um, once we get the template from the Linux Foundation, then we can start plugging it in so that we have this consistent approach. And then, um, then we will uh, just each start uh, plugging in and then sharing our progress. I'll probably schedule another call after we've had a little time to start working on it. Excellent, uh, gr excellent uh, question, Patty. And thanks, thanks, <laughs> thanks for being honest and not on that point. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, Wendy, uh, uh, for for ad hoc teams, we don't usually. Uh, uh, post something up on the wiki, but we can certainly uh, start that with this uh, with this dev team. Uh, otherwise, as you pointed out, uh, we we sort of keep all our documentation out on Google uh, Google uh, Google Docs through the drive, uh, and uh, we can certainly post something up here on the wiki for folks that want to have uh, maybe read only access to to those uh, to those documents. So uh, I'll make uh, I'll, I'll put down a lot of to do for for me on that, and we can talk maybe offline about how how best to sort of represent that here. Um, Alrighty, uh, any other thoughts or questions? Okay, so uh, so we, no old business really to speak of, um, uh, but I did bring uh, for new business. I did bring up a couple of uh, different topics. This is really in response to a conversation that we had. Oh probably about a month or month and a half uh, ago regarding uh, funding opportunities uh, for folks that are interested in, in uh, looking into ways to implement blockchain uh, solutions in the healthcare space. Uh, I polled uh, several different organizations uh, and these are all, uh, well, two, two of the three are really US based. Uh, the UNICEF is international, uh, but as far as the two that are US based, we have uh, Department of Health and Human Services, HHS, and then the National Institute of Health, Health which is NIH, uh, and then UNICEF, like I said, UNICEF is international, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll show you kind of uh, what, what I'm looking at here. Uh, we have uh, some HHS solicit solicitations that are out there right now. Uh, these are all in some way healthcare related, but not necessarily blockchain related. Of course, the solution may implement blockchain solutions in some way. Uh, but I just wanted to post this up here for those of you that are interested in pursuing uh, SBIRs or STTRs, what I refer to as sibbers and sitters. Uh, and SBIR, uh, both of these are really intended for small business. Uh, SBIR is really a small business opportunity uh, independently. Uh, and a small business, I believe, is still defined as 150 uh, employees of, of an organization or fewer. Uh, an STTR is similar to an SBIR, uh, except an STTR takes a small business and associates it with a, uh, an, an academic organization, typically a university or a college, and they uh, work together collaboratively on, uh, on developing a proposal uh, or a grant opportunity. So, uh, so what I have up on the screen right now are a handful of different solicitations, and you'll notice that the close date uh, for some of these are coming up soon. Uh, and of course, these work all the way out until you know the next couple of years or so. So there's an awful lot of opportunity here for folks of us that are interested in pursuing uh, SBIRs or STTRs or SIBRs or SITRs. Uh, so please make a note of the URL and uh, we'll try to uh, pursue this uh, whenever something that is very, very blockchain technology specific, I'll, I'll try to pull it specifically. Uh, but I just wanted to, to present this here for you today as an opportunity, uh, just as a resource, really. Uh, and and part, of the, part of the driver behind this is, I had mentioned um, Stephen Elliott uh, ha, uh, has been heads down on a grant opportunity, and that came through one of, uh, one of the solicita solicitations uh, that came out of uh, a conversation here in the SIG uh, general meeting, uh, yeah, I want to say about a month and a half ago or something to that effect. Uh, and so they were able to, to, to take advantage of that, and they, I believe, submitted two weeks ago. Okay, and same true for the NIH. 
Uh, the NIH, uh, National Institutes of Health, has a similar opportunity for funding, uh, and this is their page for that as well. Um, and then uh, these are very focused opportunities, and so sometimes the way that this will work, particularly I think it's through uh, the NIH in particular, uh, you could submit uh, uh, grant opportunities, which is you can say, hey, here's an area of interest that I'd like to focus on. Will you fund me? versus them coming coming and publishing here interest in a specific area or a specific uh, problem uh, problem set. So uh, there is, again, opportunity here for funding. Uh, in this case, two ways they have targeted funding, and this, again, is SIBR or SITR funding. As well, uh, you, can, you can approach these folks uh, and say, I have an idea for a solution, and, and, and you can describe it to them. Uh, in very specific terms, and they may fund you uh, directly that way as well. And then finally, and then this is more international uh, in nature, uh, UNICEF, uh, and I, honestly, I don't even remember what UNICEF stands for, but it it's, tends to be focused more around children. Uh, and so they have an innovation fund that I pulled up here for us. Uh, and this, uh, again, gives us an opportunity for those of us who have small businesses uh, that are in sort of a startup mode and are looking, uh, have really demonstrated that they have a project or a product that is viable, but they're looking for additional funding. Uh, and uh, on the submission page, you can sort of walk through a little bit about what it is that they expect for eligibility for, uh, for funding through the UNICEF uh, Innovation Fund. The upshot is uh, you need to be a private company, you need to be uh, pretty well established with some sort of product and you're looking for sort of, I would say, supplemental funding. And I wanna say it's up to $90,000, I believe. Uh, but uh, kind of importantly, it has to somehow relate to children. And that's kind of a key element, but it's pretty broad in that interpretation. Um, and it's all open source. And so if you're looking at an open source solution, uh, so not necessarily closed source, but open source, using open source tools and so forth, this may be an opportunity for you, for you to pursue. And I'm pretty sure that this is outside, uh, extends outside of the US. So, so for those of us that are not in the US, this may be an opportunity for you to pursue. Okay, any, any questions uh, or thoughts about uh, these potential uh, funding opportunities for those of us that are in startups that are looking to sort of pursue uh, blockchain solutions in the healthcare space? Okay, and if you have questions, feel free to contact me afterwards, and I'd be happy to help facilitate and ha happy to sort of help uh, help you get sort of established uh, through any of these mechanisms. Um, just in general, uh, Hyperledger and Linux Foundation don't don't directly get involved in this, but of course, you know, uh, I'd be happy to to help uh, get things set up. Okay, uh, so that's kind of it for the day. Uh, I always leave, uh, leave us off with an open discussion about things that you'd like to uh, change or see improved within uh, the special interest group. Uh, if there's something that's coming up uh, that, that you think might be impactful that this, uh, this membership should be, be paying uh, some close attention to, uh, now is an opportunity just to say so, and I'd be happy to, to work with you going forward. Nothing, so we're perfect? How is that possible? <laughs> but it is, that is true though. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, uh, well, so I'll kick this off. So um, as most of you know, uh, I'm, my interest is in uh, the, the kidney care space. Uh, I volunteer my time uh, with a, a great organization here in the Pacific Northwest called the Northwest Kidney Centers. Uh, it's the third largest not-for-profit kidney care uh, organization in the U.S. Uh, I, I happen to be uh, uh, on their board. I'm actually, I just, just became chair of the board. Um, and uh, one of the things that, that just came up at the beginning of uh, this past month uh, in early July is something uh, through the HHS, uh, which is called the Advancing American Kidney Health Initiative. Uh, and um, uh, uh, President Trump uh, gave a presentation, uh, I want to say, oh gosh, July 11, something to, to that effect, uh, around the 11, 12, 13, around that point in time. And it was amazing because he was actually talking about uh, kidney transplant, uh, kidney dialysis, and all the things that, uh, at least in my world, are, are really interesting, fascinating things. 
Um, and uh, the reason why I bring this up is uh, because of this uh, potential for change within, uh, within our healthcare system, uh, it's possible that we may see some really interesting uh, and exciting innovation in this kidney care space. And, this, and the sort of corollary to that is there may be opportunities that come out of that where we can look at this and say, hey, there, this is a great opportunity to, to think about using blockchain technologies in healthcare, but more specifically in kidney care. So I'll just put that out there. Uh, it's a little bit early uh, uh, right now. It, it, you know, it's, it, as, as you might imagine with government, things tend to move kind of slowly. Um, the, uh, this, this particular initiative is, uh, is an offshoot of the innovation section of the ACA, or otherwise known as Obamacare. Uh, and the value of that is that of in innovation uh, area is intended to really be fast-tracked. Uh, and the fact that it's fast-tracked means that there's usually about a year of delay before uh, a lot of these sort of uh, um, rules through CMS, HHS get formalized. Through the innovation uh, program, it's usually closer to 60 days. So it's amazing uh, how quickly this may be moving. Uh, and again, it's a little bit early to, to tell, but uh, I'd be happy to keep uh, members uh, status on that. Uh, and again, I'm looking for opportunity where we might be able to use blockchain technologies um, uh, in solving some of the things that come out of this, this, this very, very new initiative. So uh, just, just passing that along, and again, like I said, this is just more of a personal interest uh, for me, um, but uh, I'd be happy to share that going forward. All righty, anything else? Uh, and and one, one final note, uh, I, I've been working with, uh, with uh, community leadership, and uh, we do an annual survey, and it's very likely that we're going to try to move a survey to either a biannual survey or a quarterly survey. Uh, and part of that is really because we're, uh, we just, we are very blind on metrics, which is to say, it's very hard for me to know, uh, and, and Wendy, Wendy's our vice chair, uh, for us to really have an understanding of, of where membership sees value in, in what we do and where membership doesn't necessarily see interest. And so, uh, we may be driving uh, surveys a little bit more regularly, uh, in part because I think community leadership just doesn't uh, doesn't have metrics uh, available for us to that extent, and so I think we'll fall back to using surveys. Um, and so on that point, uh, when we get closer, uh, I'll probably be reaching out and asking people to help out in developing uh, these uh, these surveys. Um, does does anyone on the call have an issue with? Anything that's Google Docs or Google Drive related, uh, that which is to say, do you are are do your companies block Google Drive or Google Docs? Okay, so one of the thoughts, and this is purely speculation, was that uh, in certain countries, uh, Google Drive, Google Docs get blocked, and so if we were to use Google Forms for the survey, that might pro pose a bit of an issue. Uh, we've used Google Forms in the past for our surveys, never had a problem, but of course we, we may not necessarily know that it was a problem because those people uh, in, in receipt of these blocked uh, surveys, of course, couldn't respond to them, and so we may not necessarily know about it. So uh, if something like that comes up and you hear about something to that effect, please let me know, but that's kind of the plan going forward. Okay, uh, I think that's it. So our next scheduled meeting uh, is in two weeks on the 23rd of August. Uh, and then, like I said, we are planning to have uh, some, some speakers coming up. Uh, Tori uh, uh, and Wendy, can you, how do you pronounce Tori's last name? Senaj? I, I thought it was Senaj. Senaj, Do, okay. <laughs> does anyone, can anyone correct me on that? Yeah, I, it's C E N. A J, if I remember. Um, anyway, so Tori, as I mentioned before, uh, founder for uh, uh, founder and publisher for um, Blockchain in, in Healthcare today, uh, will be speaking coming up. And I think, uh, and I honestly, uh, oh, let me let me see. I think it's either the sixth or the twentieth. I don't remember. Let me go. I'm going to cheat here. There we go. Okay. So she'll be coming up on the sixth of September, and she'll she'll be speaking and talking about uh, her, her publication. And of course, the Converge to, to, uh, to Accelerate uh, conference that's happening in October. Okay, uh, anything else before we close out for the week? 
Rich, this is Wendy. Um, is there any chance you could stay on the call after the group discussion is done? Sure. Uh, yeah, uh, happy to do so. I do have uh, kind of a hard stop at the top of the hour, but we're 10 minutes early, so happy to do so. All right. Thanks, everyone. Uh, have a great weekend. We'll see you in two weeks. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.